Two volcanoes erupting simultaneously on opposite sides of the Pacific. While you watch this video, two volcanoes on opposite sides of the Pacific Ocean are actively erupting at this very moment. In Hawaii, the legendary Kilauea has awakened once again, pouring rivers of incandescent lava. On the other side of the world, in Indonesia, Mount Luatobi Laki Laki is expelling ash that could cause problems for some villages and may force people to abandon their homes. These are not isolated events. They are part of what scientists call the Pacific Ring of Fire, one of the most volcanically active regions on the planet. According to data from the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, HVO, and Indonesia's geological agency, PVMPG, both eruptions present distinct characteristics that reveal much about the unpredictable nature of these sleeping giants. But what is really happening right now? And why should these simultaneous eruptions matter to you, even if you're thousands of miles away? Kalawia, located on the big island of Hawaii, initiated its most recent eruptive phase in the Halema'uma'u crater within the summit caldera. According to the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, lava fountains reach significant heights, feeding an active lava lake that grows continuously. The current eruption, although mainly confined to the summit area, represents the continuation of one of the world's most active volcanoes, with records of nearly continuous activity since 1983. Authorities at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park maintain air quality alerts due to emissions of sulfur dioxide and volcanic particles known as VOG, a volcanic haze that can affect the breathing of residents and visitors. Interestingly, despite the impressive visual intensity, this type of Hawaiian eruption is considered relatively calm in volcanological terms, characterized by fluid lava of low viscosity that flows rather than explodes violently. Meanwhile, 6,800 miles, 11,000 kilometers away, the scenario is drastically different. Mount Luatobi Laki Laki, on the island of Flores, Indonesia, erupted with explosive characteristics that sharply contrast with its peaceful Hawaiian neighbor. According to Indonesia's Center for Volcanology and Geological Disaster Mitigation, PVMBG, the volcano expelled ash columns that reached considerable heights, covering nearby communities with a thick layer of pyroclastic material. The Indonesian government raised the alert status to the highest level, establishing an exclusion zone and initiating mass evacuation operations. Unlike Kilauea, this volcano has a history of explosive eruptions due to the different chemical composition of its magma. More viscous and gas-rich, creating pressures that result in violent explosions. Local authorities are distributing N95 masks and supplies to approximately 10,000 displaced people who now live in temporary shelters awaiting safe return. The Indonesian authorities' response reveals the complexity of living in the shadow of an active volcano. Disaster response teams from BNPB, National Disaster Management Agency, work 24 hours a day distributing essential supplies, drinking water, non-perishable food, blankets, and respiratory protection equipment. The distributed masks are not simple surgical masks, they are specialized respirators capable of filtering fine volcanic ash particles that, if inhaled, can cause serious respiratory problems, from irritation to silicosis-like conditions. Makeshift shelters in schools and community centers face challenges of overcrowding, sanitation, and maintaining medical supplies. Local farmers watch helplessly as their coffee, cocoa, and vegetable crops are buried under layers of ash, representing not just an immediate crisis, but also a long-term economic threat to communities dependent on subsistence farming. But here's something few realize. These two volcanoes, despite being on different continents, are part of the same geological megastructure. Both are situated on the Pacific Ring of Fire, a 25,000 mile, 40,000 kilometer arc that concentrates 75% of the world's active volcanoes and 90% of global earthquakes. This horseshoe of tectonic activity surrounds the Pacific Plate, where oceanic plates dive beneath continental plates in subduction zones, generating the magma that feeds surface volcanoes. Scientists from the USGS and international volcanological institutions monitor these systems continuously, not just for local concerns, but because large-scale volcanic eruptions can have global climate consequences. The Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991 in the Philippines, for example, launched so much material into the stratosphere that it temporarily reduced global temperature by 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit, 0.5 degrees Celsius. So the question remains, are we witnessing just isolated events or is something larger happening beneath our feet in the ring of fire? For Luatobi, 
Seismic sensors detect volcanic earthquakes that precede eruptions, while visual monitoring stations record changes in crater activity. Experts also use satellite data, including the European Space Agency's Sentinel program and NASA's SWOMI NPP, to detect thermal anomalies and measure ground deformations that may indicate magma movement at depth. The eruptive history of these volcanoes reveals fascinating and sometimes disturbing patterns. Kilauea has activity records dating back at least 600,000 years, with its current caldera formed approximately 500 years ago. Its longest recorded eruption in the modern era lasted from 1983 to 2018, 35 continuous years of activity that completely reshaped the East Rift Zone. The 2018 eruption was particularly dramatic. New fissures opened in the Leilani Estate subdivision, destroying more than 700 structures and adding approximately 875 acres, 354 hectares, of new land to the island. Luatobi, in turn, has a more sporadic but potentially more destructive history. Historical records document significant eruptions in 1951 and more recently in 2020, but the collective memory of local communities holds stories of previous events that devastated entire villages. Volcanologists studying ancient pyroclastic deposits around the volcano have found evidence of large-scale explosive eruptions that, if repeated today, could affect tens of thousands of people in a much larger radius than the current evacuation zone. What happens when a volcano erupts goes far beyond immediate communities. Volcanic emissions include sulfur dioxide and SO2, carbon dioxide, CO2, water vapor, hydrogen fluoride, and solid particles. When injected into the troposphere, these gases affect air quality locally, like Hawaiian VOG that can trigger asthma attacks and eye irritation. But if an eruption is explosive enough to launch material into the stratosphere, above 33 to 49,000 feet or 10 to 15 kilometers altitude, the consequences become global. SO2 converts into sulfate aerosols that reflect sunlight back into space, creating a temporary global cooling effect. This is exactly the mechanism by which Pinatubo in 1991 and Tambora in 1815, which caused the year without a summer of 1816, affected world climate. Researchers from NASA and NOAA use computer models to predict how future large-scale eruptions could impact climate patterns, agriculture, and even global public health through the dispersion of volcanic aerosols. Behind every statistic and every scientific graph, there are human stories of extraordinary resilience. In Hawaii, communities have learned to coexist with Kalauea through generations. They know when to evacuate, how to protect properties from acid ash, how to prepare for long service interruptions. Volcanic tourism has become part of the local economy, with visitors coming from around the world to witness Earth's creative and destructive force. In Indonesia, the situation is more complex. Millions of people live in high volcanic risk areas because volcanic soils are extraordinarily fertile sustaining intensive agriculture in a country with significant population pressure. Public education programs teach children in schools about warning signs and evacuation routes, while preparedness drills try to minimize chaos when the inevitable happens. But the reality is that for many of these families, permanently leaving is not a viable option. They are economically, culturally, and emotionally rooted in these lands, even knowing the risks. If this video made you think differently about our planet and our place on it, leave your like and share with someone who needs to hear this message. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss our next content about science, nature, and the extraordinary forces that shape our world. See you in the next video.